Hello everyone. Uh, now that Flutter 2 is out, I thought maybe to create a simple demo here to demonstrate how internationalization works in Flutter 2 and Dart. Uh, for this, I'm using the stable, the latest version uh, that is available on the stable channel of Flutter. So it would really help if you were also on the same version. To do that, you just have to type Flutter channel and make sure that you're on the stable channel. If you're on any other channel, such as master, dev, beta, you might want to say for a third channel um, stable, which switches to the stable channel, and then you will have to say flutter upgrade. That is it. This, I'm on the stable channel, I don't have to do that. So I'm just going to create a folder called uh, testing intel for internationalization. And then uh, I'm going to go to that folder. In here, we're going to say flutter. Uh, and then we're going to basically create our project, Flutter create that. Creates the project for us. Uh, I'm going to open that in Visual Studio Code. Let's give Visual Studio Code a little bit more space. I'm going to stack the simulator and the emulator on top of each other. Uh, the next thing we have to do is do go to our pop spec YAML file. We have to do three things here. Under dependencies, we're going to use Flutter internationalization uh, like that or localization uh, and then so you write Flutter localizations and for the SDK you use Flutter and you're going to use the internationalization uh, package. Uh, since we're going to use internationalization, internationalization package version 0.17.0 which uses sound null safety it's better that we actually migrate our project to using sound null safety as well. Press save here so that it does a pop get for you for now and in the terminal, um, you need to say Dart Migrate. Since this is a completely new project, the migration is going to go very smoothly. You have to just change one thing. Um, and that is the title of the widget. We're just going to go ahead and open this URL for the migration tool. And we go to the main Dart file and change the title to a required field by using this add, which is actually, and then we're going to rerun and then apply migration, which now, come to think of it, is not really an important step because we're going to kill that my app um, widget anyways. Uh, after you've done that, start using the internationalization package here of version. 0.17.0 and press command S if you're on a Mac or control S if you're on a Windows system. Good. Now that is done, we're going to go to our uh, main Dart file. Uh, we're, as I said, we're just going to kill this my home page. It is quite a large uh, widget. And instead, we're going to say a stateless widget, STL. And we're going to say my home page. And in here, uh, we're going to return a scaffold with a simple app bar of a, that has a title of, for instance, hello, or title for now. Uh, and save so that we get some uh, formatting. After app bar, we're going to create a body, and in there, we're just going to say center. Uh, and then the child is going to be a text. For now, we're going to say hello world. Okay. Uh, that is good. Remove the title from here since our my, uh, my home page doesn't take a title anymore. And then I'm going to remove all this commented out text from there. So we get a cleaner uh, context to work on. Good. One thing that I remembered, which we've forgotten to do, is to go to the pop spec YAML file and under Flutter say generate. And in here for the generate, it's very important that we say generate true, which is going to help us with the code generation of our uh, ARB files, which I'll mention to you soon. Now, uh, before we move on, you need to know that Flutter uses a file format called ARB, and ARB is where we are going to put our localization text. Uh, and we're going to do that under a specific folder, under lib, which we'll talk about soon. But before we do that, we have to tell Flutter how we're going to set up our localization. And to do that, you need to create a new file in here and call it l10n, as in localization.yaml. Let's go in here and tell it 
that it has to extract our ARB files, which are which is our localization files from this directory under lib l10n. We're going to create this directory, so don't worry about it. Then we also tell it uh, which is the base language for our project. In this project, I want to support English and Swedish. So the base language is going to be English. And I'm going to say template ARB file. And we're going to say uh, basically app en ARB. This is a file that we're going to create. So the name is something that we decide. It doesn't have to be like this. But if you want to follow along with the steps that I provide, maybe it's easier that you just do the same thing as I'm doing here. And then we're going to tell the word to output the uh, generated files for us. And you specify output localization file. Uh, and we say app localizations dart. Good. Now that is done. We need to go under lib and then create that folder that we talked about. It, it will be called l10n. And then we're going to create our two ARB files, which are going to host our strings. I'm going to call the first one app en ARB, which is empty for now. And then the other one is going to be app SV for Swedish ARB. Good. Now, uh, Visual Studio Code has a really good extension that allows you to edit these ARB files without actually having to go into them. And that is called ARB I18N ARB Editor. Install that extension. I've already done that, so I don't have to do that again. After you've done that, go to the L10N folder and right click on it and say ARB Editor. Create a new key here and call it hello. For the English value, write hello. And for the Swedish value, say hey and press save. Now, if you go back to your ARB files, you see for the Swedish version, it's added the key and the value. And the same thing for the English one. Well, that's really good. Now, before we can continue, we have to change one thing in the iOS application. And that's to tell the iOS, basically, Xcode project that we also are supporting the Swedish language. You don't have to do that for Android, but you have to do it for iOS. Right click on the iOS folder and say open in Xcode. Go to the info P list and anywhere in here, just click press enter to create a new key and value and type localizations, press enter. Xcode understands that this is a localizations array. So it creates an array for you and puts English, which is the base language as its first item. Right click anywhere here and say raw keys and values. Go here to the item zero and press enter to create a new item. And in here type SV for the Swedish. Now you can right click and say raw keys and values are gone. This SV is fine, which is for the Swedish language. Now we're going to close Xcode and just in case we're going to say flutter clean so that it cleans the derived data for us. Good. Now we might get some, get some errors here. I'm not really sure hope not. Uh, what you need to do now is to run your project. I'm going to do a Flutter select device and choose Android. Uh, and then we have to say run, run without debugging. What this is going to do is to kickstart the uh, build process for our auto-generated uh, localization file. If you go under Dart tool, um, there's right now a Flutter build uh, place there. After the generation is done, you're going to see a new folder uh, appear up there, which is going to include our localization files. If we're just a little bit patient. Good. Dart tool, Flutter build. We only have our Flutter build here. Now I'm unsure why we didn't get our, oh, that is probably because I've created this L10 YAML file in the wrong place. So this is a really bad thing. You need to create this under your root folder. I'm going to move it under the root folder. Good. I'm going to stop this and then start without debugging. Now, now you can see there is a new folder under Dart tool which is called Flutter Gen. And if you go there, Gen L10N, there's a new Dart file here for your 
supported languages, supported locales and the hello key. Before we can say that we're done, we also have to go to our material app and tell it what localization delegates and what are the supported locales. And you do that by using localizations delegates. And in there you say app localizations dot. We have to actually import a specific package before we can do that. We say import package. And in there we say flutter underscore gen, gen L10. And in here we say app localization start. Now we get access to app localizations. And in here we say localization delegates. And there we say locales, supported locales. And then we say again app localizations, supported locales. Good. All right, now that we have done that, we go to this text widget and say app localizations of our context, which is an optional value. Hello. Otherwise, use a default value, for instance. Didn't work, or maybe something more pleasant. A default hello. I'm going to refresh this application now from the beginning. As you can see, in Android, the default language right now English, and it's typing hello here. I'm going to go to settings and then change the language to Swedish. Let's go in here, languages and inputs, languages, add a language, and then we're going to go to the Swedish section here, Svenska, and add that and then drag it on top so that Swedish becomes the actual default language right now. Let's close this go to our app, which I'm not sure actually which one it was. Now you can see that the default value is changed to hey, which is the value that we provided in our ARB file. Really good. Working good on Android. Now let's test the same thing on iOS. I'm going to bring the iOS simulator here and then put the Android emulator here, covered by Visual Studio Code. I'm going to stop this. Command Shift P and then select a device, which is our iPhone 12 Pro. And then I'm going to say run without debugging. Let's see what happens here now. It may take a while. Should be quite fast though, since we really haven't uh, made a huge project. But the first compiles can also can always be a bit uh, of a hassle. In iOS, there is also a quick way of changing our language, which I'm going to show you. But let's just test the iOS app in English first. You can see that it's working as expected. Now, what you want to do is to press Command Shift H to go to home screen or just drag from here. It should work. And then we're going to go to settings. And I was testing before, which I'm not sure which one our app is. I can see that it's testing Intel, which is this app. So I'm going to go there then go into language and then you can see Swedish is actually chosen uh, or not chosen is available and that is because of the change that we made to the info plist click on that you can see that your debug session is going to be terminated because this is essentially going to kill your application on the simulator and start it again the next time you start the app let's go to the home screen and then to our app again great you can see that hey is also printed here I haven't really tested this on the web uh, or Mac and Linux. It shouldn't be that much of a, a difference, really. Uh, now that Flutter 2 is available, you should just be able to do a select and then run it on Chrome, for instance. Uh, I don't think that I want to do that in this uh, video. I think you get the idea of how localization works with Flutter 2. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you have any comments uh, or any uh, questions, do let me know.